Hi everybody, welcome to lesson 6.2, Representations of Functions. Today's essential question is, how can you represent a function in different ways? Go ahead and pause the video to write down the EQ. Key idea, functions as equations. A function rule is an equation that describes the relationship between inputs, independent variable, and outputs, dependent variable. If you look at this diagram here, you can think of the function rule as some sort of machine. So you put something in there, the input or the x value, in this case here it's negative 2. The machine does some weird cranking and gearing things up, and then it spits out the output. So based on the rule that you are programming the machine to do, in this case here it's y equals 3x, um, it spits out an output. So in this case here, it's negative 6. Example 1, writing function rules. A says write a function rule for the output is 5 less than the input. Now, this isn't exactly brand new because we've done this before um, when we have translated from words to math. So, you're just translating from words to math. So when you look at the statement, the output is five less than the input, anytime you see the word output, that represents y. Anytime you see the input, that represents x. We've talked about this before in the previous lesson. So the output phi is, so that's gonna be y, is is always equals in math, right? Five less than the input. So less than usually indicates subtracting. So we're subtracting 5 from something, the input. y equals x minus 5. When you look at b, it says write a function rule for the output is the square of the input. So again, anytime you see output, that's your y value. Input is your x value. So we're going to go ahead and write y equals, is as equals, the square of the input. So the square means you're just using an exponent of 2. Example 2, evaluating a function. What is the value of y equals 2x plus 5 when x equals 3? So you have a function here. Um, many of you recognize that as an equation. Um, and we've done this before. When x equals 3, evaluate simply means substituting in a number and, um, you know, using the order of operations to simplify your answer. So here we get y equals 2 times 3 plus 5. You're just going to simplify everything using the order of operations. So we know that we're going to be doing multiplication first. So that's 6 plus 5. And then y simply equals 11. On your own, write a function rule for the output is 1 fourth of the input. 2, 3, and 4 wants you to find the value of y when x equals 5. Make sure to pause the video and try it on your own. Let's see how you did. Number 1 says write a function rule for the output is 1 fourth of the input. So remember, output again is y. Input is x. So here, I'm going to simply write for number 1, y equals 1 fourth of, in math, indicates multiplication, right? So 1 fourth of the input, so 1 fourth x. Okay? Number 2, we're simply going to plug in um, a 5 for x. So y equals 4 times 5 minus 1. That's going to be 20 minus 1. That's going to be 19. Number 3, y equals 10 times 5, which is simply 50. And then number 4, we get y equals 7 minus 3 times 5. So that's y equals 7 minus 15 you're going to get negative 8. y equals negative 8.
let's take a look at this key idea here. Functions as tables and graphs. A function can be represented by an input-output table and by a graph. The table and graph below represent the function y equals x plus 2. So this is a little bit of a review. Um, we've worked with tables before. So you have your x values here and your y values here. And then you simply have your ordered pair. Right? And when you plot those points, 1, 3 would be here. 2, 4 would be here, and then 3, 5 would be right here. So we've done this before you connect the lines. By drawing a line through the points, you graph all of the solutions of the function y equals x plus 2. Remember that every point along the line represents a solution to that equation or that function. So even if you get a point that's not necessarily... Um, a nice clean pair, you might get something that's, you know, two point something and four point something. That is still a solution to the function. It lies on that line. Example three, graphing a function. Graph the function y equals negative 2x plus 1 using inputs of negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Make an input output table. So you have this in your notes um, with the columns extended down. So let me just extend it down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and start by putting in the x values. So here they give you the x values. It's your inputs, right? So we have negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This is where you would do your work, right? So if you're plugging in the negative 1, it looks like this. Okay, we can do a little bit of mental math here. A negative times a negative is a positive. So that's a positive 2 plus 1 is going to give you a positive 3. So your output here is going to be negative 1, 3. Okay, the next one we're plugging in a 0 for x. So here we have 0 plus 1. That's going to be 1. Your ordered pair is 0, 1. Here you're plugging in a 1. You have negative 2 plus 1. That's going to give you negative 1. So your ordered pair is uh, oops, positive 1, negative 1. And then here you're plugging in a 2. So you're going to get negative 4 plus 1. That's going to be negative 3. And then you have 2, um, negative 3. So this table here helps you to organize the information. Um, so now we're ready to graph. All right, so I moved my grid, so that would be easier to see. So our first point is negative 1, 3. So remember, here's my y, here's my x. I'm going to find negative 1 here, and 3 is here. 0, 1 is here. 1, negative 1 is here. And then um, 2, negative 3 is here. So go ahead and draw a straight line through your dot. So your graph should look something like this. And if you recall, um, this equation here is in slope-intercept form, right? So if you remember, your y-intercept here is a 1. So let's check. Does it intercept here? Yes, it does. And you have a negative slope. So from there, you would go down to an over 1 down to an over 1. So you could also graph um, just by using the y-intercept and the slope, right? I mean, if the question is asking you to use a table, use a table. If it's not specifying how to graph, then definitely go for the y-intercept and slope method if that's what you're more comfortable with. So on your own, um, you are to graph these three functions. It may seem like a review because, yes, you have done this before. Pause the video and give it a try. So let's see how you did. Number five, 
if you were to graph just using the slope and the um, y-intercept, you would have a y-intercept here. So there's our y-intercept. And then from here, we have an imaginary 1 here. So that's a rise of 1 over 1, right? Because 1 is the same as a 1 over 1. So from the dot, we're rising 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. Um, go ahead and connect with a very straight line. It's okay if you go off the graph. And number five should look something like that. Number six. Um, some of you might remember this from our direct variation lesson. It's almost like a y equals negative 3x plus 0. So remember, when you don't have a y-intercept, your y-intercept is 0. So that means you start here where y equals 0. Your slope is a negative 3x. That's the same as a negative 3 over 1. So from your y-intercept, you're going to drop down 3, 1, 2, 3, and then you run 1. You could even think of it as um, y equals a positive 3 over negative 1, x plus 0, right? Remember, a negative 3 over 1 is the same as a 3 over negative 1. Because either way, when you divide those two numbers, you get a negative number. So from the y-intercept, you could also go up 3 and over to the left one. Then you're going to go ahead and connect your dots with a very straight line <clears throat> to get a graph that looks like that. Number 7, um, again, using the slope and the y-intercept, I would... Start here with 2 for my y-intercept. And my slope now is a positive 3, which is a 3 over 1. So from my y-intercept, I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Now when you have a positive slope, it is the same as a negative over a negative, right? So you could think of it as a negative 3 over negative 1, x plus 2. <clears throat> so you could also, from your y-intercept, go down 3 and to the left. Down 3 to the left. Either way, you're going to get that very straight line. The dots should line up. So we're going to go ahead and connect those dots to get your graph that looks like that. So in summary, there are many different ways that you can represent a function. So you can represent a function in words, which we saw in one of the earlier examples. An output is two more than the input. You can represent the function as an equation. When you translate those words into the equation, it's y equals x plus 2. You can represent the function using an input-output table, where you have your inputs as your x values and your outputs as your y values. You could represent a function using a mapping diagram, which is what we learned in lesson 6.1, where again, you have your inputs of x on the left-hand side and an arrow that tells you what the associated output is, the y value. And finally, you can represent a function by using a graph. So when you graph your x and y ordered pairs and plot them, make a line, you would see the graph. So this slide right here should um, be very helpful in um, having you write your summary and answering the essential question. So how would you answer the essential question, um, which is, how can you represent a function in different ways? That's all that I have for you today. I will see you next time.